guys' garage. A little bit of old school action today. Check out that hubcap. Have you ever seen a boosted 93 Buick LeSabre? Yeah, you won't today either. No, not <laughs> today. But we do have a very good friend with a cool old ride. Lots of miles on it, but a long way to go. We got everything from struts and ABS. We're gonna get technical, show you how to keep your ride rolling. Hey, we're on our 93 Buick LeSabre. Now she's a gym. Why? Because it doesn't really have to be a fancy car or a hot rod. Sometimes you just gotta get from point A to point B. And you can pick these cars up for cheap, 1,500, two grand. You can't kill the three eight liters, man. Oh, They're in this truck. run people. forever. And this right. car, given a little bit of love, will run forever right along with that engine. Yeah. Now, we got a few issues that it came in the door with. Now, yeah. one of them, the four corners are pretty sagged and worn out. So we've got a lot of float. A lot of that mushy feeling, the worn out struts, the worn out shocks. You need to replace those about every 50,000 miles. And this girl's gotten a lot further than that. Yeah, now when you do your shocks and your struts, you want to think too about the springs. Now you think, well, they're steel springs, they're rugged, they'll last forever, but they actually don't. They'll fatigue. So over time, you got two issues. Sometimes you'll see them actually break. They just, they yeah. spring so many cycles, they'll break. All of a sudden, one corner's dropped down lower than the other. You're not going to get the same spring rates. The car's not going to handle safe. Or you might just get one that's sagged over time, and then you get uneven corner balancing. Anybody in racing knows you're trying to get balanced corners. Yeah. You don't want two wheels pushing down, so you're kind of teetering on those. So you don't get the same grip. So one direction, the car will turn really well. The other direction, not so much. So springs are really important. And you know, instead of getting your strut and then having to replace the spring and right. do the whole compressor thing, and sometimes it's a little bit scary, you can get a full assembled unit like these from AC Delco. Now these things are great, man, because they come already assembled. It comes ready to bolt in. Saves you a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort, right? Yeah. Now this guy is pretty easy to get out. Now we've done is pretty much let all the spring pressure out. This is just sitting here to hold this whole right. hub assembly. This and they typically flop around, so maybe a bungee cord just to kind of hold it up in space. But Jack's there just to kind of let everything sit. I think we've got everything down here. Let me yeah, jump really, up. It's like seven bolts and you have yourself a brand new strut. It's that easy. So it saves you a ton of time getting an all-in-one unit. Then you've got the upper bearing assembly. Everything is there. There's no indexing of the spring. It's You're powder coated, to go. so it's a pretty good gig. Yeah, you ready to catch that guy? Yep. All right, so I got the three simple bolts up here, and the strut will just drop right down. Right. Got her? Ta-da! All right. This. So one thing you want to make sure you do, if you, if you do replace just the strut, <laughs> is replace your upper bearing because this is, you know, where your whole assembly is pivoting on. So there's a bearing in here and you can imagine it's getting a lot of contact, oh, yeah. but it's also responsible for the turning of your vehicle. So these will wear out, they'll moan and groan. So you want to replace those. And then in here you've got, well, a missing, <laughs> missing bump stop. Jones bumper or bump stop. So this is going to control, you've got a spring rate for ride, so it's nice and plush. But this guy's gonna make sure if you hit a big impact, Boom. you don't have metal to metal contact somewhere and really hurt something. Or as I like to call them, teeth chatters. Yeah, and we got our ready strut from AC Delco already ready, so we don't yeah. have to do any of that work. We can throw it right Ooh. back in. And let's do that. So there if you wanna are. fish it up here, I see, ooh, there we go, that's one. Pretty sweet, you can put in a strut that simple, that easy. All right, Kevin, finish up buttoning up this first strut. Got the ABS sensor all bolted in, ready to go down here, man. Well, that's good news, except you got three more. I know. Sorry, right, well, I'm going to work on the top end, and we're going diving head first into this <laughs> engine compartment. So get the air cleaner out of the way, and you can see we've got a whole slew of parts up here. Everything from diving in the top of the engine, from the intake manifold, to some serious safety issues on the ABS. If you've never seen how one of these systems work, you might want to stick around. We're going to take a break. Hey, welcome back, man. We're getting elbows deep into the ABS system on our 93 Buick LeSabre, and we did indeed find a lot of issues. Yeah, the first one, major safety issue, we were having bypassing the master cylinder, so the pedal just kept going down. So we replaced that to get the vehicle back on the road sure. and do some evaluation. And you could tell in here, it was full of junk, full of garbage, man. Yes, yeah, so we've probably eaten up the seals. You're just not getting quite that pressure buildup. Right. But 
that's not the only problem we've got. The owner is complaining about an occasional pull to the right under braking. Now sometimes that could be hardware, the hoses could swell and so forth, but we did a visual inspection of the hardware and everything looks pretty good. Yeah, all the pads are wearing correctly, the rotors look pretty decent, so next thing we're going to do, we actually have an ABS light, is check the codes. Right, and for those of you that don't know how ABS works, just imagine a controller, a set of valves, and some sensors, and that sensor is reading that tire spin, that rotor turning really fast. Right before it locks up, before it goes into a skid, it's going to see that rapid deceleration of that skid, and it's going to decrease that line pressure and let those calibers come off that rotor to keep spinning. Now to increase pressure and decrease line pressure really rapidly, sometimes 40, 50 times a second, because it knows the car can't go from 70 to zero in a second. It can, you just probably don't want to be in it when it does, right? Yeah, now it's really important for brake safety, but it's even more important for steering. Because if you lock up your wheels and try to turn the wheel and, and get the car yeah. to move, it'll just keep going straight. But with ABS, even though you got that sort of shaking feeling going on, you can full hammer that brake pedal and you can still steer out of a maneuver or out of a bad right. situation. For those of you that have ever seen ABS and you drive in winter conditions, you'll feel that pulsation in your pedal if you hit some snow or ice, that, frrr, that vibration. That's what you're actually feeling in the pedal. All right, so we do some code reading. Yep, we've got a code AO45, left front inlet valve circuit. So it kind of makes sense if the left front valve is open, uh, when we clamp down on the right, the car's going to yep. pull to the right. Okay, so we probably got a stock inlet valve in our ABS unit, right and by looking at the crud in that master yeah. cylinder, it's probably made its way down into that ABS unit. So between feeling it in the vehicle, reading the codes, looking at some of the other diagnostic yeah. you know, opportunities we've got, it's probably yeah. time to start pulling that ABS unit. All right, we got the ABS unit out of the car and on the bench. Now, we just can't go put the new one in without taking the old one apart and seeing how it works. Right on. Hopefully, we're going to see some nasty stuff when we pop this top right here. Yes, yeah, so this is the valve body side. Got it. All there right, and then underneath, so these are the solenoids. These are going to control the valves and where the fluid's able to go. What's a, oh yeah, so you can see the transfer here. We've already got a lot of really nasty yeah. looking, look at all that stuff that's in the fluid. Now, a lot of that black stuff is just contaminants from O-rings and so forth. And understand, when you push that fluid, all right, when you bleed your brakes and you push those, uh, those brake pads back on the pistons, and a lot of times, oh, look at all that, we'll push all this contaminant, debris, moisture and so forth back up into the lines and back up into this guy. And as you can tell, it is covered, absolutely clogged up right here. Now the other thing too, reason why you want to flush your system, check out the inside of this line. So this is a standard line, I think this side you can see even better. You can see the copper in there. So there's a copper lining in there, protective coating, and there's additive packages in the brake fluid just like you have in oil. So they're anti-corrosive, moisture inhibiting, but once those break down, then you start to eat away the copper. So now you have this copper leaching into your system right. along with the moisture and those additives keep the seals intact. So a lot of that black content is probably a lot of the seals, maybe some of that master cylinder broken down. So anyway, that's the inside of how one of these are and how important it is to keep that system clean because these can be pretty pricey. Now yeah. we've got a new setup here from AC Delco. So again, we've got the motor, we've got the valve body, we've got our little gasket that sits right here. And once we mount these two together. We'll transfer a couple of bolts over. It's ready to go back in the car and get bled. Yeah, man, this is kind of cool. Houston, we have debris. <laughs> Ethanol used in many fuels today actually absorbs water in the atmosphere and leaves it in your fuel tank. Dirt and water in your vehicle's fuel system can rob your engine of power and performance. This water begins to settle on the bottom of the tank and then begins to rust, leaving even more sediment behind. Remove water in the fuel and stop corrosion for good with Rizlone's Water Remover Fuel Dryer. Rizlone's super concentrated isopropyl formula works with all types of fuels, diesel and gas. Plus, it works all year round to prevent ice in the fuel lines and give you quicker startup times. This tip is brought to you by Rizlone, affordable solutions to expensive automotive repairs. This segment of Two Guys Garage is brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Hey, welcome back. We're still on our 1993 Buick LeSabre. Now we switched over to the intake side of it because there were some issues there as well. 
Yeah, this is a high mileage engine. This old 3800 V6 is a really strong runner, but they've been known to have uh, intake manifold issues. And you can see with this one, once we snake it out of here, yep. it's got a plastic upper and right. an aluminum lower. Now, we'll show you a couple features here. Now, this is EGR, so this is coming right from the hot exhaust. You got hot exhaust gases mixing in with the intake manifold, so you get good distribution to the cylinders, but hot gas is going into a plastic manifold. Yeah. And if we flip it over, we've got coolant feeds that actually come from the lower intake manifold yeah. to warm the throttle body area. And you can see there's coolant leaking here. Yeah. And probably, I bet if we put a light or something in right here, we'd probably see some hairline fractures in this plastic right here. And again, because you have those hot gases coming in with a coolant, and you're going to see some failure right in here. Yeah, so you got a lot of, you know, pretty intense stuff happening with a plastic component. And over time, the seals degrade, and you start to get what we're seeing here, some leakage. So let's get this on the bench. Let's we'll start pulling this lower out as well. All right. Got the lower off now. I'm gonna get this guy cleaned up. Curtis, we're a bench top pro here. Now this thing's pretty cool. It's a portable, storable parts washer, right? So it makes it really easy. It comes with a gallon of concentrate. You dilute it down with a couple other gallons. And the great thing about this thing, there's no flash points, so we don't have to worry about anything catching fire, any sort of vapor like that. It makes for a really bad hair day. But the superstar of this show is actually this little packet of microbes. Now you get some of this actually with the, uh, the Bench Top Pro, you get about four of them. And these guys, the same guys used in the Deep Horizon incident, oil spill, Exxon Valdez, and so forth. And these guys, after you get all this crud off your intake and so forth, are gonna be able to really tear down in here. These guys actually just get after the oil and eat it up. They're actually live organisms. All right, I hope you are uh, feeling the flavor of some LeSabre, bros. Now get in there and get hungry. And they get after that grease and just nom, 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 nom. Never stop. So, Pretty cool, man. As you can see, it works really well, man. Well, what's nice is I don't have to do anything on the upper because we got yeah. the whole upper gaskets and everything from AC Delco. So this guy will bolt right on. It's kind of neat. You look inside, this is a multi-piece construction. So a lot of the newer intakes, they can get a lot more complex shapes right. and then piece them together instead of trying to do one single like aluminum casting or whatnot. Cool. Now, if you can, while you're at it, could you uh, clean up those gaskets? Come on. Come on, man. I'm a tool nothing? cleaner. Yeah, well, I got some extras, yeah. but you know, just to give you something to do, mm -hmm. we got some more AC Delco gaskets to make yeah. it easy. <laughs> All right, I'll clean Thanks, up the buddy. engine side, you finish that up. Got the lower all cleaned up and ready for the intake manifold. Got the new gaskets on. Oh, yeah. Put a little RTV in the corners to make sure those seal real nice. Man, because you always going to leak. If you're going to leak, that's where it's going to happen, right here yeah. on these wedge designs. Check it out, man. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> I love that little Benchtop Pro. The thing I really love about it is once you get it dirty, those yeah. little microbes just yep. clean. It cleans itself. Self-cleaning. If only I could make a pile of laundry that would do something similar <laughs> instead of just sit there and stink. Yeah, I wish that as much <laughs> as you do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bring it in, bring it in. All right. Ready to mount this sucker. <laughs> Let me get this bore lined up with that guy. Okay. Drop her down. Let's throw a couple bolts in her. Perfect. We're going to take a break. You guys stick around. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit twoguysgarage.com. All right. Hey, welcome back. Yeah, we're still at our 1993 Buick LeSabre, but on that Freshen Up project, she's come a long way. All right, while we had this upper part of the intake off, the alternator out, everything sort of laid out here, we noticed that the tension pulley and bracket was making a, well, it was talking to us. <laughs> and that's, about, that's not the talking you want to hear. That's like performance back <laughs> in the day when you had the little roller skates with the metal wheels. Right. Like that's actually, you can hear how dry the, those bearings are in there. Just listen to that. Ugh. Yeah. Luckily, AC Delco made a whole tension pulley and bracket set up. We can just slap right in there and be good to go. Yeah, so we got a new belt on. So this is done on the front end. As you can see, all the intake's done from the upper, brand new. Got all gaskets on the lower. Threw a new T-Statin gasket in there. Radiator hoses from AC Delco. So we're tricking this thing out. It's going to take that 200,000 mile. Extend it yeah. to 50, 300, right. whatever we want out of this thing. 450. So, <laughs> now we're going to put a new battery in it, but while I was pulling off the old terminals, I noticed a few things that you guys can keep a look out on your cars. Now, one of them was the corrosion that's hiding behind the terminal end. Now, it's fine. You can just cut these guys apart. 
And let's see. There we go. Get it, Kev. Get it. Oh. So that's good start of corrosion there. And what we've got here is some hot water and some baking soda. And if I can keep from burning myself Ooh. big time, I'll bring my little beaker down here. Do a little dip. Yep. And dippy do in there like that. And that baking soda and hot water is all you really need to eat off that corrosion. And then with that new boot, you can show them that new boot over there. Yeah. Just slide that guy on there. There's new spacers and bolts. This would be a nice clean system, no resistance in the line. We can throw a battery in. Next thing we got, throw some fluid in there, start bleeding that ABS system. Right. All right, just topping off the brake fluid there. We let it gravity bleed for about an hour now. Now we're ready to cycle this pump. Because with this ABS system, you can do the old school thing. If you get a master cylinder, you let it gravity bleed, and then you go to the pedal and do the pump thing as well. Now we get to cycle the pump, speeds things up just a little faster. Well, you got a lot of cavities in there, all of the valves and everything, so you can get a lot of pockets to trap air. Well, what's nice is a unit like this, not only could we read codes, but we can do input. I can cycle the valves so I can hear them clicking, and I can also run the pump which is an auto bleed function. So let me get in here and get that kicked off. So there we go. I don't know if you Listen can hear that. the motor cycling. Now it's a high pressure pump and it's cycling through. It's opening up all the valves, cleaning out all the air. It's so much quieter than what it was. Yeah. Didn't have all that debris in there hammering the valves. Now we got air on the front side or on the far side of the ABS unit. We've got to get that out still. So we can go back to gravity bleeding, letting some of those bubbles go out towards the back of the car and the ends, or just go right into the foot Get yeah. that thing till the pedal's nice and firm, lock it down, then we're good to go. Yeah. Now, big thanks to Federated Auto Parts, hooking us up with all the goodies here it's for Jay's car. Stuff. Yeah, keep this thing running for another 100,000 miles. But you know what? We're going to finish this thing off and take a break. We'll see you back in a minute. All right. DupliCutter Bed Armor Kit is the ultimate in truck bed protection. And it's the only do-it-yourself kit that's actually formulated with Kevlar, so you know it's going to be tough and strong. So let's go through a couple easy steps on how simple this is to get in the bed of your truck. First, you got to get the stuff on. You want to clean out the bed of your truck and scuff it. You can either use the Scotch Bright Pad, which is included, or a dual action grinder will really help and make the process go a lot faster. Now, when it comes to applying this stuff, you want to start with the bed aerosol can first, all right? Now, this bed armor aerosol is going to get all those tough to reach spots, the corners and up underneath the bed and so forth. So, we want to use this first. And then you want to pour some of this in our little tray, which is included. Our roller comes with it as well. This is going to give you that textured, non-slip sort of grip that you're looking for. You just really just roll this right under the bed. And the great thing about the bed armor kit is it's a water-based polyurethane formula. It also comes with some UV protectant, so it's not going to fade on you. So anytime, anywhere, you need a non-slip surface that won't chip, crack, or peel, look for bed armor kits from DupliColor. All right, they're available at Federated Auto Parts. Hey, welcome back to the parts room. Yeah. Now, if you've got any sort of ride, a toy, whether it's your boat, your RV, your hot rod, you name it, you've got to have one of these. Now, this is the battery extender powered by Schumacher Electric. It's the SP3. Yeah, it's a 3 amp charger, basically, and it's got a rolling digital display here. So it's going to walk the user through a step-by-step -step process so they won't mess anything up. It's got all your adapters, your connectors, everything's here to maintain your battery and extend the life of it. Well, what's cool is you notice there's no buttons. So nope. even though it's going through eight steps of charging, there's nothing for you to do. It's just telling you where it's at, what it's doing. If your battery's bad, it'll tell you. If you reversed your clamps, polarity, yep. it's got reverse polarity protection. It'll tell you, hey, you know, dude, switch it around. <laughs> Wrong way. So it's a great way to keep all your stuff ready to roll anytime, any place. Now check it out. This is the SP3. It's the battery extender powered by Schumacher Electric, and you can pick them up at Federated Auto Parts. You ever get into a jam and you got a tool and you got another tool and you wish you could just be one? Yeah. But if you could just put them together, it'd be worth like 10 tools. <laughs> yeah. Enter Las Vegas Tools with the Easy Puller. Now check this thing out, man. This thing's really simple, comes in super handy. The one or two times you're going to use it in the shop per week, it's going to become a lifesaver. Yeah. So you got the vice grips, throw it down there. It's got this slide hammer here so you can really get cranking, snatch up any sort of broken bolt, nut, pin, whatever you need. Roll pins, I mean, you can always clamp onto something. You can barely get the edge of like a roll yeah, pin. Yeah, man. But now what? 
Well, with the slide hammer, you can pop that sucker right out. Now, what's really cool is, you know, because you got this hammering force, you can even grab a bolt sideways, and yep. as you're starting to turn it, pop that sucker down and just give that extra jolt to break it free, get rid of that rust or corrosion or whatever binding. It's one of those things you can grab onto body panels, yeah. whether it's a welded stud or a suction cup. You can grab the fender lip and start pulling it out. So a Trust thousand me, and one man. ways you can use this tool. It becomes crazy handy. It's from Las Vegas Tool. It's called the Easy Puller. From WeatherTech, it's their floor liners. Yeah, and you see these all over out in Colorado, man. Any Colorado, make, what about the rest of the <laughs> continent, yeah. you know? Well, I'm sure you see them there, too. Any make, any model, any year, and these things are fantastic. Special tunnel grooves to keep that water, debris, dirt, whatever, off your pants leg. I love these things, man. They're awesome. Yeah, now they're digitally scanned, so they're going to fit exactly for your make, model, year. And you can see they've got a really cool, it's a developed material, so they've got a stiff core, but it's got a nice textured surface on the top side. Rubbery surface on the bottom to grip the carpet, and it retains the factory, you know, clips well, or clips, brackets or whatever. Or it's going to keep this thing in place, whether it's a little pop clip or the hooky doos. Now these are for the front, right? And this actually has the hump protection. You get in the back of the truck, and you see the hump's always dirty, covered in debris and dirt. This protects the back, the front. You got them all from WeatherTech. Yeah, it's their floor liners. Check them out. All right, the best way to take care of your truck is from Lubrication Specialties. It's yeah. Hot Shot Secrets Diesel Extreme. Yeah, man, this stuff is fantastic. It comes in 35 to 40 gallons, 75 gallons of fuel, or 150 gallons. Cleans your fuel lines, your tank, and your injectors. That's right. It's a cetane booster, as well as it disperses the water that's in your tank. Yeah. Make sure you've got cold starts well. Make sure all that stuff is nice and clean and protected and lasting for a long time. It's Lubrication Specialties Hot Shot Secret Diesel Extreme. That's right. Well, hopefully you guys learned a lot today because, man, we really jumped on that. Pizza Supreme. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We knocked out a lot of projects on that thing. So hopefully you learned a little bit, followed along. That thing's gonna ride for a little bit, a few more miles down the yeah, road. Yeah, man, you gotta run it smoother and stopping better. That's right. Well, we're out of time this week, so we'll see you next time.